Hello, folks. Um, today, Source wants to talk about negative entities, energies, and attachments. Um, I am on YouTube live and Instagram live simultaneously. So pick the platform of your choice. Um, you know, why is this conversation important? During this time of awakening, it's extremely important that we begin to take our power back. It's extremely important that we begin to recognize truth, light, and wisdom beyond what we have been taught or how certain things have been framed as to keep us vibrating in fear. So this conversation is a conversation of empowerment, right? It's not a conversation for uh, expanding fear or creating more fear. And one of the reasons why source what has been explained to me through other channels such as Abraham Hicks and, you know, folks that really focus on the light. Why that has been the case and why Source has been coming through in that way is because as a collective, we have needed to um, first reach a certain vibrational frequency of empowerment before we can have these types of conversations. Because when we're talking about entities and energies and attachments, if you hold fear and you haven't fully integrated your shadow, you are just going to perpetuate the realities wherein these energies can express themselves, okay? So um, the good news is that as a collective, we've uh, our frequency is really expanding, and so we can start having these conversations. And if you are here, it's because, or if you've been drawn to the frequency of this conversation today, it's because you're someone who's really ready to take that empowerment to the next level. So what exactly are negative entities? And the first thing that Source wants to explain is they are simply frequencies. Everything is energy, so they are frequencies. They can't be anything else. Now, why does Hollywood, um, why have they for so long, you know, created these dramatic, uh, scary movies with possessions and uh, clowns and monsters and all this, you know, these types of things are like images of devils and, and all of that, because in your mind, right, they're seeding an image in your mind. They're planting an image in your subconsciousness that creates fear, that um, solidifies the belief that there's something outside of you that is scary. Now, if everything is energy, even if, even if a being is showing up, presenting themselves, expressing themselves in a particular way that's like really ugly or like whatever, um, they're still energy and they're still, they're projecting that holographic image to you. But when you simply say at the core, this is only energy and you recognize that that energy doesn't have any power over you, you literally um, collapse that holographic image back into light. OK, so first thing is we have to get over the, the scary look, right, the scariness of what has been planted in our consciousness to be afraid of. That just literally takes the whole just you just take your power back, basically. Um, OK, so entities are simply frequencies, simply energies. Now, how are they exactly formed? And OK, so. So we're going to kind of take a little step back and we're going to talk about fallen angels because there are different types of negative or what source likes to call low vibrational beings or low vibrational uh, portions of the multiverse. And fallen angels, we're just going to make this really simple today, are portions of energy that are exploring consciousness just as you are and have decided to lower their vibration at such a level that they are so separated from who they really are and are in complete and total darkness, that which we call evil. 
Now, what Source is explaining with this is we're using the term exploration because all of you are on a journey of exploration through consciousness. And consciousness is comprised of a frequency spectrum. That spectrum ranging very, very high into the higher tiers, that which we call Source or unconditional love or unity consciousness or oneness. And also ranging very, very, very low into what we might call the under realms or the underworlds. But nonetheless, it's just a frequency spectrum, right, that expands upward into infinity, into source. And also, uh, it's not really downward, but we'll just say downward. Really, these energies are, these frequencies are all parallels. There's really no up and down, but we frame it that way based on how light feels in our body, right? When we expand into higher frequencies, we literally feel like our entire being is being uplifted because all of the particles and the molecules are simply vibrating faster. But these are all frequencies. So lower frequency beings just vibrate at a very, very dense speed at a slower pace. All, all happening at the same time on the frequency spectrum parallel energies. Now, why would a being choose to lower their vibration to such a degree that they have no remembrance of themselves as source? Well, on one end, it plays a very significant role for the whole 11-11 on my end. Amazing. Um, for one reason, it one thing that, it, thing that it does is it plays an important role for creation. Um, and so this is like the typical contrast creates expansion. For you to know yourself as the light, something outside of the light has to exist. But it doesn't mean that that something outside of the light is absolute existence. It's simply something that we allow to exist. And it also doesn't mean more powerful. That's something that you really need to understand. Darkness does not convey more powerful. Light is ultimately powerful. Okay. So understanding that this sort of works in two ways. On one end, we allow these energies to exist, to expand creation, uh, because there has to be this sort of illusion of the opposing force that will push your soul into a sort of mastery that ultimately propels your soul's evolutionary journey back home into the realization that you are source. So what are these energies going to do? Typically, they're going to challenge you. They're going to expose your deepest fear they're going to uh, they're going to feed off of all of the ways that you have forgotten that you are source. Now, the goal is that you see through that you collapse that illusion, meaning you really absorb your own shadow and thus you become a self-realized being. Now, this is also, you know easier said than done because we're all going through this journey of forgetting who we are. So we get caught up in the reflections. Oh, that is a demon. Oh, that is an archon. That is a negative ET. That is this, that is a, whatever it is that you're experiencing. Now we're going to say something that when you first hear it, it might sound and we might return back to the fallen angel concept just to like really solidify it. Um, okay, let me just do that right now. So ultimately with fallen angels, they're simply playing a role for all of creation to expand. On some level, they have agreed to do this contractually, right? In their highest of highest of highest, they have agreed to drop their vibration down so low as to allow this sort of game to go on. We can say that right now, are they consciously choosing to do that? No, they've forgotten. They're, they're sort of lost. But on some level, they've contracted and chosen to do that. Um, so going back to what we were talking about or what we were getting ready to talk about. When you collapse the illusion of something else outside of you and you reabsorb that energy back into the self, you remember that everything was you all along. Okay, so 
we're going to say that they are you and you are them. And just kind of sit in that energy a little bit. It might make you feel a little bit uncomfortable. And that's okay. And what Source is explaining is there is no separation between you and any other energy or entity that you perceive within creation. Because there is only oneness. This doesn't mean that you merge with evil and become evil or you merge with darkness and become dark. It simply means that you no longer create separation as to create hierarchy, meaning that is bad, that is evil, that is dark, that is against me, okay? That is creating the duality. That is creating the this in them. That is uh, creating the victimization of yourself. That is creating the relinquishing of your power. But when I say, well, really, this is all just source, Within the game of infinite creation, and the there are only beings who are exploring different levels of consciousness and different frequencies of being, different states of being. Holding that awareness in and of itself is your ultimate shield protection and power. Because now you are not feeding into the illusion of the other that can attack you or harm you or um, do anything to you, you just whoosh, collapse it. Oh, there's an energy within creation experiencing this lower tier of frequency for whatever reason. Not really my business. Don't really want to investigate unless you do like shamanic stuff and exorcisms like me, then this otherwise this is literally none of your business. OK, it's literally none of your business. But in simply knowing that, do you understand what we're doing? We're demystifying. We're demystifying the concept of um, being on the receiving end of harm. This is really important. OK, so what we're going to shift into right now is, OK, so we're going to talk a little bit more about how these energies are formed and, you know, they're many different types of entities and negative energies. We already kind of talked about fallen angels on that level, but there are also energies that are simply formed from trauma events. So let's say there's like, okay, we'll say something like 9-11 that happened, right? And um, there's so much fear and there's so much pain and there's so much harm and there's so much death and it is chaos, the energy of that event lives on or can live on. The energy of that event can take on a different form. So oftentimes when we experience uh, trauma events and circumstances like in everyday life or in our childhood or something like that, those instances created certain, certain energies that then took on their own form. And those are the same attachments that you are dealing with present day. They, they were they were birthed and created out of the energetic ripple of a certain event. Um, this is also kids. So when people are experiencing, let's say, like ghosts or something like that. Now, source wants to explain there are really no such thing as ghosts. And if you're experiencing something like that, what's happening is either a being is projecting that image to you to create fear, or you can be experiencing the holographic memories or um, fractals of a soul that has crossed over. It's kind of like they let the energy that they left behind um, that hasn't been fully reabsorbed into source. Okay. So with these, these entities and these attachments and these things, they just, you know, they feed off of your light. That's why we call them shadows. Um, and all it takes is beginning to recognize when, when these energies are creating disharmony within your own being and your own frequency. And let me just see if you guys have anything here on Instagram. 
I saw a ray of light behind you. Yes, we called in an army of angels before this transmission because what happens is when you're having conversations like this, broadcasting it to like 400 people, um, everybody has their own entities and attachments and stuff like that. So yeah, and we are going to do a clearing at the end of this as well. Let's see what we got here on YouTube. Um. Okay, so certain events just create energies and memories. Also emotions. Source wants to talk about emotions. Emotional energy itself and even thoughts. It's, it's sort of like, okay, when we're talking about the field, we're talking about the collective field of energy. Um, it's just simply made up of emotions and thoughts that vibrate on different frequencies. This is why if you are in a bad mood, you become a vibrational match for the thoughts in the collective that are on that wavelength. If you're in a good mood, that's why it's easy for you to think good thoughts. Negative and positive thoughts are just energies. And um, they're so these thought waves, you know, they're like these these energy forms that just kind of like float around in the ethers. The same thing with some emotions, even you can channel your emotions. I've done this before. You can tap into an emotion and you can ask it, uh, where are you coming from? Because everything is consciousness is really what we're getting at here. This is like a deep shamanic code where you're unlocking in everyone's DNA. Everything is consciousness. Every thought Every emotion, every feeling, ev everything you've ever experienced can live on as its own energy. And so depending on our vibration, um, that is what determines what we are a what we're a magnet to or like how I teach my students. If you're in priestess portal, you know this. Um, you are your own antenna. And it's less about, you know learning how to channel or learning how to receive information. And it's more about how do I set my antenna, right, to sync up with a certain frequency station that is broadcasting the thoughts, the concepts, the ideas that are in alignment with pure source. So um, the first step in protection is actually vibrating as high as you possibly can because automatically that sets your antenna to we'll call it this the source station <laughs> and when your antenna is synced up with the source station you just get pure source when your antenna is attuned to like i don't know the the freaking dark underworld station then that's when people get attacks and you know all these types of things happening it's just a matter of where you're where that antenna? Where are you focusing that antenna? Now, the difficult part is that we can have certain energies attaching onto us or amplifying trauma and unresolved trauma um, within us that does make it difficult for us to um, set that antenna where it needs to be. But the cool thing is, once you clear yourself especially when it comes to unresolved trauma and trapped emotions, you are automatically attuned to the source station. And you're receiving all of that pure positive energy. Those pure positive broadcasts are just, boom, coming through your channel. You don't even have to think about negative entities and energies. Okay. So, okay, we're going to talk about signs, signs of dealing with negative entities and then we'll get into like how to clear them and I'll share a bit of a personal story um maybe last week or two weeks ago I woke up in like a very unusual inescapable bad mood like you ever just are you ever in one of those moods where if someone just breathes you're like annoyed if someone talks, you're like annoyed. And I don't really feel like that. So it, it really stood out to me. So first I went through my usual kind of things of like, okay, let me meditate. Let me pray. Let me um, 
exercise, you know, let, all the different things like, OK, what where is this really coming from? Is 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 there a negative? Is there a limiting belief that is working beneath the surface that's creating this emotion? You know, going through this kind of like self-investigation. And this is also something you should really do self-investigation. When you feel something, you want to self-investigate from a place of one, non-judgment and a place of unconditional love for yourself. Do not judge the emotion that just amplifies it, right? Which is what these energies want. Um, so I say, okay, did some self-investigation. Nothing's really shifting or changing. Uh, this is definitely an attachment. And then recognize that I probably picked up an attachment from, you know, a client session or something like that, and then was able to immediately clear it. Um, and as soon as I cleared it, and it's very simple, I just said, in the name of all there is, was, and ever shall be, I command any beings who are not in alignment with oneness, unity, and harmony to leave the 32 layers of my auric field now. Immediately, all this energy was released. And I bounce right back into my normal vibration. It can literally be that simple. So protecting yourself is first about awareness. Where is this coming from as opposed to being consumed after you self-investigate? And within that self-investigation, if you truly um, discover that this is not coming from your own ego... Then you say, okay, perhaps this is, you know, some type of entity or attachment. And you simply clear it. And source can step right in and just help you clear it because you collapse the shadow by simply recognizing, okay, this is not the way that I want to feel. I have the power to no longer feel this way as opposed to allowing this energy to consume me. And I know these, from what I experienced with this like mood, it really felt like inescapable. So if you're feeling depressed right now, or you've been depressed for a long time, um, chances are you have some beings that are just amplifying where you haven't realized that you don't have to feel that way. And you can send lower portions away from your being. We all have this power to send them away. Now, when you send them away, it, Okay, we're going to circle back around because there are like some some things we got to give you for that to like actually be effective and work. Um, what I want to go into is some other signs. Right. So a bad mood. Another thing is you want to look at anger and judgment whenever your uh, anger like. Whenever you're angry from a, a place of judgment, like you everything's irritating you, you're super annoyed, or you're looking down on people, or you, you're you just nitpicking other people, including yourself. Um, that is coming from a spirit. The spirit of judgment is working through you. Now, something else we want to expand on with like entities and these types of attachments negative entities is that they are simply spirits or they can also be spirits, spirits of a certain emotion or of a certain quality. So we have the spirit of jealousy. If you find yourself overly comparing yourself, right? Source is saying a little bit of comparison is normal because we're experiencing separation. Everything we're talking about is when things are really amplified, right? Amplified in a way that they start to consume you. It's all, that's always a sign of an entity at work. So the spirit of jealousy, the spirit of envy, the spirit of judgment, the spirit of anger, um, the spirit of laziness. When you can't move, you're not taking action. You're isolating yourself. You're sitting in the house all day. Um, you're not doing anything with your God-given life force energy. You're unmotivated, uninspired. You lack soul purpose. You don't really have a reason for being. And then you're just sitting and you're not doing anything. The spirit of laziness is an entity working through you. The spirit of addiction 
And addiction can show up in many ways. I would even say um, the spirit of addiction is really, really, really one of the first clues or hints as to an entity kind of like working in your auric field. You can be addicted to food. Now think about this. Um, if you start having cravings like just lots of foods that bring your vibration down, um, sources giving me sugar and carbs and pastas and, you know, and it doesn't mean you can't enjoy these things or you can't, um, everything in moderation, sources saying, is the key. But if this is amplified every single meal, you're like, sugar, I'm have, I have this sweet tooth, okay? Entities, parasites. The parasites are just entities that are in your physical body, right? So you want to take a look at that. Why, why am I feeling this craving to eat this way or to even eat? I'm getting, I think the word is gluttony, where it's like you just, it's greed. It's just like overconsumption of things. It could be overconsumption of spending. That's also an addiction. Overconsumption of shopping. It's like this entity is just like more, 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 more. And we're going to get, we're going to go deeper deeper with some fallen angel stuff in a little bit as it pertains to that this old this just this amplified energy of just like more 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 you can be addicted to sex to the point where like if you are so sexually aroused that you can't think and this is like happening throughout the day a lot sign of an entity this can happen if you watch a lot of porn, if you're like addicted to porn. I don't know if I can say the P word on these platforms. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't get like banned or something like that. Um, but if you if you are like overly indulging into these with these things to the point that you can't get it out of your head and your mind and like in the middle of the day, you're needing to go off and do these things. Entity. Right. Now, this conversation is to not make anyone also like feel bad. It's to empower you to become more aware of behaviors, actions, thoughts, feelings, things that are happening that you feel like you don't have any control. When we start becoming responsible for our personal vibration, that is when we step into the higher tiers of alignment and living in light. Okay. Um, obviously addiction to certain drugs when you are craving, um, craving re release and relief, but really some of these things just open up your org field for these energies to further attach into the subtle energy body. Definitely, if you smoke a lot of marijuana, um, it can open up portals. You would want to do that in moderation. If you're doing that every day, sources suggesting that you stop immediately. And if you're wondering why specifically we're talking about this plant medicine in comparison to other ones, the freak it's the frequency that it vibrates at really connects people into the astral plane and um, heightens some of your negative emotions that then these energies will bind and attach onto. So just be aware, everything in moderation. If you want to smoke, you know, two times per week or something like that, that's great. Whenever you need to do something every single day, guys, it's an issue. You shouldn't need anything every single day. And this is really coming from a place of non-judgment, right? We all have things that we've had to work through. Um, and there's nothing wrong with saying, you know what? I need it. I, I was working with that energy for a period of time in my life. And now I can release it. I can release it with love because I don't need it anymore. So um, the spirit of resentment. The resentful energy creates energetic cords 
that keep us binded to certain people, experiences of our past. I mean, energy cords can just connect all over the place into so many different places in our body, into different places in other people's body, throughout all timelines, spaces, and dimensions. I mean, these cords are really can be complex and multidimensional. And there are certain entities, you know, that are going to, um, okay, hijack the energy moving between these cords and distort them even further. And the final one we want to talk about, this is like the most important one that we can mention today, self-hate. And I want you to really think about this. If source and your higher self and your angelic team and benevolent beings of love and light, if they vibrate here and they're operating in pure, total oneness and unconditional love, that means that any voice or self-judgment or self-criticism that you are experiencing in your mind is not coming from them. So who is it coming from? This is when people experience psychic attacks. They can't get out of the negative thought loop. I'm not good enough. I don't like the way I look. I hate my job. I, I don't make enough money. Okay. An entity is just sitting, listening to you. Talk to yourself this way. Have these emotions and then just amplifies it and then it spirals and it gets bigger and it gets bigger and it gets bigger and then it feels inescapable this is why we said the first step is awareness becoming aware i'm not really being nice to myself right now and every time you recognize you're not being nice to yourself you simultaneously simultaneously recognize there are energies that want you to continue in that frequency, want you to continue in that energy because that is the frequency that they can feed on and that can sustain them because higher vibrational energies, right, just clears them out. So of course they want you in a, in a, in lower, in a lower thought form. Now um, we're going to circle back around to what we were getting into with more about fallen angels and, and why, why this, obsessive need or this obsessive desire to um, amplify your low vibrational state. And what source wants to explain with this is because they want to be you. They are jealous of your human experience, meaning because you are in a physical body and they are not, and they're not in a physical body because that's just a part of their their contract when they originally split off from source and chose the angelic route that comes with certain um, parameters and certain boundaries and certain aspects of their job and of their role. And so we're not going to go deep into the story today, but what we will say is there are those who are envious of your existence and they wish to experience life through you. from a distorted place. So in protecting yourself and shielding yourself, the first step is unconditional love. For if you vibrate in anger and hate, you just become a vibrational match to them. You're on their level. You're within their spectrum. You're, with, you're on their bandwidth. And so they can influence you. When we operate in unconditional love, it's that we are accepting all of self. This is why we um, talked about shifting out of separation, right? This or me versus them, them versus us, even when it comes to entities. Unconditional love of all is unconditional love of self because you are source and source is everything and nothing exists outside of source. I am unconditionally loving of this aspect of source that is experiencing this level of consciousness or experiencing this range of frequency. Doesn't mean I want to be best friends with them, right? <laughs> but 
I can simply become aware of the higher picture of what's happening here. And so I love myself and I even love that part of myself that can't remember who they are because that source is perspective. Source is just operating in total acceptance and recognizing the value of every single thing that is happening. Every single thing that is happening, okay? Um, so unconditional love. Step two, vibrational maintenance. And vibrational maintenance is, you know, what is your diet? It, this doesn't mean veganism and being plant-based either, by the way. But what is your diet? What is your exercise regimen? Everyone should have one. Everyone should have an exercise regimen because um, lower vibrational beings or entities and energies and attachments cannot infiltrate a healthy body or a, we'll say, a strong auric field. All attacks happen through the auric field. If your auric field is strong, if your physical body is healthy, those energies just get sent away. Now, this is why when we were talking about the spirit of addiction when it comes to food or the spirit of laziness, the lazier you are, the more unhealthy you are, the more uh, penetrable you are. So these energies just want to bring your frequency down into lower, denser, vibrating energy because that's where they thrive that's that's where they you know really can take over aka a possession now possessions are actually much 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 more rare than we think however they are possible and they do happen and typically they happen when someone's vibration has gotten so low so dense now these energies are working through this person. Now these energies are taking over. Now these energies are running the show. And this person cannot clearly think. They cannot hear source. They cannot hear spirit um, because they have been, they are under attack, fully under attack. So we share these things with you, dear souls, to empower you in raising your vibrational frequencies as to shield yourself from lower vibrational portions who wish for you to deteriorate as so to become a viable host that they can influence to then go out into the world and um, carry out negative and low actions that harm your other reflections. This is why we're having this conversation with you. Anyone who has ever done anything that as a collective you have you have experienced and witnessed and seen as evil will use Hitler as an example. They were under the influence of low vibrations. Some of you have people in your life right now who are narcissistic, who are aggressive, who are gaslighting in nature. They are under the influence of entities. It's not them. It's not who they really are. They're simply under attack. Okay. So when you know that, you stop engaging with them, which brings us to the next ultimate form of protection. Stop engaging with people immediately who are in such a low energy that you recognize that it always brings you down. If it brings you down consistently, every time you spend time with these people or with this person and you leave them and you feel low and you're having um, negative thoughts towards yourself, you're feeling bad about yourself for whatever reason, you're feeling shame, you're not feeling good enough immediately you want to immediately stop engaging in conversation with these people now we hear some of you asking source what if this is family or close friends um limit conversation as much as possible even if it's your family and yes someone is saying pray for them absolutely we can always send energy 
to our other selves. Now, there is a such thing as being in such a high, vibrating, loving, fun, playful, inner childlike, innocent frequency that these energies just leave that person when they are in the presence of you. That is also possible. And someone's asking, how do you help them? You help them through your example of being in alignment with source. You do hold the power to command entities to stop talking through the person, at least as long as they're interacting with you. And you can do this telepathically. You don't have to say it out loud. But if you become aware that this is happening, you're like, okay, this is an energy obviously working through this person. Um, you just command them to leave and they have to as long as they're in your presence. And unconditional love. It's not about judging other people. We've all, sources of making this clear, you have all been under the influence of low vibrational portions of the universe, aka entities at various and different points in your life. Every single last one of you. And it is always because you are in a state of unawareness. So when we hold compassion and unconditional love for those who are in unawareness, that is how we help them. We can also point certain things out to them if they're ready to hear it. Allowing them to become aware of distortion in their field, in their vibration. Hey, I, I really, really love you and I want the best for you. So if you are open to hearing my perspective, here are some things that have helped me shift my energy. Now, a lot of the people that you may be surrounded by are not ready for that type of conversation. So in the meantime, you simply choose to see the best in them. That's another way to help people. You help people by seeing the best in them. So although there might be, you know, these energies that are expressing themselves through this person or working through this person, by you remembering who they really are, you're not being consumed and sucked into the illusion with them. Because the last thing that you want to do is perpetuate for the person that they are a bad person. That just keeps them vibrating in the same energy where that net, that self-hate or that self-doubt can be amplified by entities. This also doesn't mean allow people to cross your boundaries or to um, be around people, people longer than you need to that you know are not operating at a high frequency. So you have to evaluate your relationships. You know, is, is this relationship worth my alignment? Is this someone who's open to expanding their frequency? Is this someone that I need to um, create distance with? Is this someone that I need to speak with on, uh, on a rare occasion and just send them love from afar? If it's bringing up too much um, unalignment for you, misalignment for you, emotional just emotional chaos for you. That is a sure sign that you should probably create some distance and some space. Okay. So also um, clearing your space, but clearing your space also means clearing the objects in your space as well. Entities and um, these energies love to attach onto possessions. Like um, I'm getting... Let's say you have, okay, you have a lot of clutter in your home. That's another sign of entities. When you're lazy, you don't clean up. There's a reason why this has circulated throughout the collective that cleanliness is next to godliness. When you have clutter and you have things all everywhere, a spirit can work through you to, to be carrying out in that certain way um, because that's just more possessions and items and things that they can, that the energy can attach onto. 
and stay in your home. So you want to clear the energy from possessions as well. And I highly recommend, um, we had Elliot Eli Jackson, Pure Source Channel. Um, we did an interview with him a few weeks back. I highly recommend getting his Sapiential Discourses books and Source Shares um, multiple shields and multiple prayers that you can use to cleanse your home and to cleanse your space and to send lower uh, vibrational energies away from the objects in your space as well. Okay. Highly, highly, highly recommend. And let me just see if there's anything else we want to talk about in terms of protection. Okay, um, Soros actually wants to address something right now with black magic. This seems to be the theme uh, this month because I think this came up the last time I was on a live as well. If you are currently doing any spell work or magic, wherein you are attempting to allure others into loving you or doing something outside of their free will, Stop immediately. Those are lower vibrations working through you. Stop immediately. Love spells and all these different things. Anytime you're doing something that works against someone's free will or their personal power, you're meaning you're attempting to take their power away. Um, that is low vibrational in nature. And we will ask that you stop for your good, own good, your highest good, and the good of the other person. If you believe that you are working with certain spirits who you are sending out to carry out certain tasks and things, we ask that you stop immediately. I'm just laughing because of the image that I just got with that. It's like, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm sending my minions out. Um, okay, these are not entities and these are not energies that you want to align yourself with. It always backlashes. Trust us. It always backlashes. If you believe that you are working with certain ancestors that are hateful towards any other group of people, you want to stop communicating and connecting with them immediately. If you believe that you are working with ancestors who are supporting you in getting things that you want from a low vibrational place, you want to stop doing this also immediately. Any spirit or consciousness that you believe that you are channeling. And if those energies are um, conveying a frequency of separation in any way, you want to abandon your communication with them immediately. And I understand spells are just an intention. When we spoke about spell work and magic, that wasn't to, that wasn't to say that they are evil. Magic is real. Magic is powerful. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about um, black magic. Which is always coming from lower vibrational portions who are getting you to operate outside of cosmic universal laws that we've set forward based on the foundation of oneness, love, light, wisdom, and truth. Okay. There's, we know there's a lot of this stuff circulating. It's confusing. That's why we step forward to clear these things up. Okay. One more thing we're going to talk about is plant medicine. We want you to be aware 
when you are engaging with any plant medicine, any psychedelic, you are opening yourself up and you are potentially opening up portals. We will not discuss portals today, but you are opening up portals. Now, these are tools that we have given to support you in perceiving beyond your time space reality as to remember who you really are. But these are tools that you should be engaging with on occasion, not all the time. This is another way that entities can work through you. When you think, oh, I need one more, um, one more shrooms trip. I need another ayahuasca ceremony. I need more. I need more. I need more. I need more. Because when you're in those state of beings, you are fully open. And what people have not been talking about is coming out of these ceremonies and these different things. A lot of people experience depression after. Now, partially, it's because the chemicals are rebalancing in, in the brain and all throughout the body, but also because they're coming back with entities, energies that they, they've opened themselves up. So our suggestion is that you engage in these practices twice per year. If, if that, if you're going to um, engage frequently with high levels of psychedelic substances and plant medicines twice per year for most people is way more than enough. If you're doing a microdose, that's different. You're working with smaller quantities. And even that, you should have an end date on, on doing that. You shouldn't microdose indefinitely. The idea is that in small quantities, you rewire the neurological pathways and connections in your brain that will allow you to think beyond the implanted programs in your consciousness and formulate new habits, new patterns, new behaviors. But it's not also not to escape everyday reality. This is another way that lower vibrational portions work. Getting you to believe that you can escape the reality that you've created. Okay, um, now I'm just going to go through some questions. And you guys on Instagram, feel free to start asking any of your questions. You are taking in the frequency of the plant and those who have had their hands and intentions on it. This is very, very, very true, super important as well with plant medicine. Um, the way that we're handling plant medicine is really sort of out of alignment. Um, I had some shamanic Amazonian ancestors step forward a few weeks ago with this, and they were just showing me like the whole chain of, or just like this consumption has become really uh, just like, this commodity, uh, plant medicine has become more of a commodity and how it worked way back when is that you had to be initiated to even serve the medicine because there had to be so much intention, um, so much alignment that went into the entire process of serving and ceremony and connecting with the consciousness of the plant. So be aware of these things. You definitely want to be aware of who you're sourcing your plant medicine and psychedelics from. Absolutely. Because that will also determine what you get out of the trip, what you get out of the experience. I want to circle back around to something. Um, I just feel like we need to expand on it with the, the, the main way that you can 
one of the core or main ways that you can become aware of an entity or an attachment is how you feel about yourself. This is like so important. <sighs> how you feel about yourself. Do you really see the beauty of you? And we're not talking about physicality. We're talking about your soul. We're talking about your essence. We're talking about your spirit. We're talking about your worth. We're talking about your magic, your beingness, your existence, truly knowing who you are, what you're capable of, how much power is inside of you, how much intelligence is inside of you, how much wisdom lives inside of you, how much potential lives inside of you. That should always be at the forefront of your beingness, the way you choose to feel about yourself. I love myself. I am brilliant. I have purpose. I have so much to share. I have so much to experience. I have so much value to offer. I love myself. I love everything about me. I love everything about my journey and the experiences of my life because they've made me who I am. I wouldn't change a single thing, a single step. I am in total acceptance of every version and aspect of myself. That is source because that is the way that source feels about itself unconditionally. When you do not feel that way, you can be assured that there's an energy wanting to expand or further play into you feeling bad about you. If you've been walking around with self-doubt, if you've been walking around um, overly nitpicking with yourself, if you've been walking around um, just in a, in a frequency of self-judgment on any topic, that is not your higher self. And you want to become aware of those thoughts immediately and command your power and your love for yourself and sources love for you back into your being. So what we're going to do, um, I want you guys to repeat after me. And this is a good time to actually share more about how shields or protection works. One thing is crucial and required, which is belief. This is why if there's anyone who also does energy work, exorcisms, this that, that type of thing, shamanic work, um, we cannot do anything for a person who does not believe in their power to send away low vibrational spirits and entities. There's nothing we can do about that. So you have to believe with, with every fiber of your being that you hold supreme authority over your field, over your space, over your consciousness, over your mind, over your body, over your auric field. You have to fully know that. You have to reside in that I am creator consciousness. I am one with source now. That is the only requirement to send away low vibrational beings. It does not take going to a shaman. It does not take going to a psychic. It does not take um, various light language activations. These things can be powerful. They're permission slips. They're reflections that show up in your reality to help you if you have not remembered your own full and total power. They can work in assistance, but the most powerful tool that you have is learning how to command your authority over your space and your body and your mind and your heart and your soul. And so, we are going to invite you to repeat after us. And we're going to just send some energies away. 
command them away. Some of them um, feeling it in the field, you know, really not wanting to let go. Um, and that's OK. We're going to absorb them back into pure positive energy. It is time for lots of them to transcend in the name of all there is, was, and ever shall be. Source God, I command any and all lower vibrational entities, energies, and attachments to leave the 32 layers of my org field of energy now. I command any and all lower vibrational entities, energies, and attachments that are not in alignment with universal oneness, love, light, and truth to leave the 32 layers of my auric field now. And so it is uttered, and so it is done. Perfection I am, perfection I will be. And share with me in the chat how this feels. In your body, in your mind. Maybe there was some cloudiness that is no longer there. Some mental chaos that is no longer there. Some sadness that is no longer there. Some lingering grief that is no longer there. Some anger, some frustration. It's not there anymore because it wasn't yours. And we have one more shielding exercise. Um, you really want to do release letters. And when you do a release letter, it can be regarding a certain person or situation or something that happened. You write the letter to get out all of your, your true emotions, your feelings on this topic. You write it exactly as you feel. You just get it out. You got to get this energy out. By the end of the letter, you reach a place of forgiveness, understanding that we have attracted everything to ourselves for our ultimate expansion, if we so choose to believe that. And then you have to burn this letter because we're taking that dense energy and we're transmuting it back into spiritual energy. You have to burn it. So release letters really, really help um, clear any unresolved trauma and emotions trapped in the body that are unconsciously attracting entities and low, vib low vibrations to yourself. And then prayer and meditation. Prayer and meditation. Prayer is simply talking to source, talking out loud to source. Sit with source every morning or before you go to sleep or at some at midday, always talk to source. Source, this is what I really want. Source, this is what's happening. And this does not mean um, begging from a place of lack. This does not mean, oh, source, please fix everything. I'm so, mis you know, it's, it's a different frequency. We pray and we talk to source as to release. You know, it's like having a cosmic therapist I'm hearing while simultaneously knowing our power to co-create with source to um, manifest the reality that we desire. That is the difference between perhaps some of the outdated explanations surrounding prayer. If you have a rough day at work, source, I really want to step in my purpose. I want to call in work that really serves me, that makes me happy. I am tired. I am stressed. You know, if you 
if you're pissed at your boss, tell source, I'm fucking pissed at my boss. I got to get the hell out of there soon. And I know that I can show me the way. That is a prayer. Meditation, very, very, very important. And it's not something we can skip. Now, maybe you need to find a different style of meditation. Um, and why we meditate is because it opens and it un unlocks the third eye and the crown chakra, allowing you to connect up into the higher ethers and channel, receive, clearing, clearing, clearing thoughts that do not serve you, allowing the mind to rest. The mind needs to rest all day. It is just judgment after judgment, opinion after opinion. It's just like, you know, it just won't shut up. You know, sometimes your mind is going and you're like, would you just freaking shut up in there? <laughs> you have to meditate. So maybe you need a different style of meditation. You can um, meditate with your eyes open, particularly if you have a very overactive mind and you just simply t take in the visuals of your surroundings. Because for certain brains, when you look at something, it pulls you in. And as it's pulling you in, thought cannot exist simultaneously. And especially not thoughts that do not serve you. So open eye meditation, open eye meditation, we'll call this like, you know, we, we have stargazing. We'll just call this day gazing. You just day gaze. Okay. Um, anything that pulls you into a flow, a rhythm, for some of you, it's cooking. And you get into this groove, music, music that just pulls you into that higher frequency. Things like yoga are more so moving meditations, meaning the repetition of the body can um, put you into a transcendental state where the your awareness actually separates from the body and you begin witnessing the one who is moving. Who is the one who is moving? You become separate. Many different tools and practices and modalities and resources that we have given you across many religions and practices. They all come from us. Use them. Okay. So we are done here today. And I just want to say thank you all for being here. And I hope that we have shifted your perspective on this topic and you walk away feeling empowered, knowing there is nothing that can harm you without your consent, without your agreement, without your frequency invitation. Um, and so, um, yeah, thank you for being here, guys. Much love and light.